My name is Kim Keyes, and I'm recording this outside of Washington, D.C. Back in 2016, I came up with a series of doll customization tutorial videos where I taught how one could take a Barbie doll and customize her into a superhero known as Squirrel Girl. I was inspired to do this as a result of reading the Marvel comic book series, The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl. I read the letters page where Squirrel Girl fans decided to create their own action figures, mainly because there were no official Squirrel Girl licensed products that they could purchase in the store. I also saw letters from fans asking if there will ever be any official Squirrel Girl action figures released, and the editors of that comic book basically said that they have received no word of any such products being released anytime soon. I've done doll customizations in the past, particularly taking Barbie dolls that I found in local thrift stores and rehabilitated them as fairy dolls. And I've even sold a few, few of my creations at various craft shows over the years. I felt that Squirrel Girl would be an ideal comic book character to do a DIY project since compared to other Marvel superheroes, she was less popular, yet she has a loyal following and there was, clearly, there was clearly a demand for a real-life figure that they could hold in their hands. There have been feature-length movies, TV series, and cartoon shows based on Thor, Iron Man, Spider-Man, and The Incredible Hulk, while Squirrel Girl only existed as a comic book series, with no immediate plans to adapt her to any other media. Had there been an official Squirrel Girl doll, I would have never attended a, a DIY video tutorial series because, to be honest, it would be easier for people to just go to, the, to their local store and buy a doll, which is why I don't do DIY doll versions of super popular characters like Wonder Woman or Batman. Squirrel Girl was a relatively minor character in the Marvel Universe compared to the others, so there was no doll or any other related toy that was released. So I thought about stepping up to the plate and provide a free tutorial for a few months until I saw that the local Target store in my area had started selling Made to Move Barbie, which was a Barbie that had more articulated joints than the usual Barbie fashion doll. I thought this doll would be perfect for converting into Squirrel Girl, so I made my own customization of that doll while filming footage for, footage for my tutorial series. I mentioned that while Made to Move Barbies is the most ideal doll to use as a canvas, I also mentioned that those who were cash strapped could also purchase used Barbies from local thrift stores, whose prices, prices generally range from anywhere from $1.50 to $3. From there, I made separate videos detailing the steps that could be used to convert Barbie into the unbe unbeatable Squirrel Girl. I showed how to style her hair to resemble Squirrel Girls, by either cutting her hair, then dyeing it with a mixture of red acrylic paint and water, or purchasing a doll wig. I showed how to find patterns that replicate a Squirrel Girl's outfit, along with finding inexpensive fabric from a local fabric shop. Finally, I showed how a tiny squirrel that's manufactured and sold by Schleich and can frequently be frequently found in hobby shops and arts and crafts stores, could be used as a stand-in for Squirrel Girl's sidekick, Tippy Toe, by simply tying a piece of scrap pink yarn around that squirrel's neck. I gradually uploaded the four-part tutorial series over a one-month period, then I moved on to other things. A year later, I sold my customized Squirrel Girl doll with her friend Tippy Toe at a craft show, in an effort to both raise some necessary funds so I could stay afloat financially and clear my home of some of my older finished craft projects. So in the fall of 2018, 
I attended a weekly animation meetup that's held at a local makerspace where we were talking about what's going on in the world of animation. Ola, the person who runs this meetup, showed us a bunch of clips he found of upcoming new animation series that were debuting either on network television, cable networks, online streaming services, or some combination of the three. Among those new series was one called Marvel Rising. Apparently, this new series is Marvel's answer to the popular DC Superhero Girls franchise in that this series features superheroes as teenagers. In contrast to the DC Superhero Girls, which feature popular female superhero characters like Batgirl, Wonder Woman, and Supergirl, Marvel Rising features the lesser-known superheroes who have only been featured in comic books, and they are making their formal debut in an animated series. Among those superheroes was none, none other than Squirrel Girl, along with her sidekick T Tippy Toe. More recently, Hasbro has released official licensed products based on the Marvel Rising characters, and yes, there is now an official Squirrel Girl doll that's available for sale. I recently saw those dolls on sale at a local Target. There is a Target exclusive Squirrel Girl that costs $29.99, which comes with her sidekick Tippy Toe and also comes with a second outfit so her owners can change her clothes. Okay, I'm gonna do I some purchased a cheaper here. $19.99 Squirrel Girl package that has Squirrel Girl, Tippy Toe, and no extra outfits. Here's what happened I I after I brought the doll home and unboxed her. Scissors come in handy when you do unboxing like this. God, this is definitely tough packaging here. Hey, look at all these layers of, oh man, look, I mean, oh man, it's like all these layers of tape here. Dang. Oh, this is like really stuck here. I think I'm... Let's see if I can... Open without damaging the doll. Uh. Oh man, this tape is like really. Okay, I got some of it done. Oh man, this is... I really hate this. God, I hate this packaging. This is like, they make it almost impossible for anyone to get into it.
Okay, I got her freed, but not her, most of her. <laughs> tippy toe and her tail are still, her tail and tippy toe are still <laughs> attached to the package. <sighs> now, how am I going to get this? Can I get this tail? Okay, got the tail and tippy toe. Guess let me see. Ooh. All right. Got these guys freed. Now, how do I attach? So we attach her. Oh. Okay, there's like, there's a hole right here where you attach your tail. Let me see if I can get this right about here. Yeah, there's a hole. So you just st stick the tail in a hole like this. Oh man, this is, to make it really hard to, Okay, this is like the worst. Ugh. Dear God. I'm going to have to shut this off and figure this out. I decided to change locations to a local park because it was a beautiful warm fall day when I shot this footage. In a way, the location is appropriate because there are squirrels everywhere. I had to stop shooting the previous scene because I was having a hard time attaching her tail. It turns out that you re really have to push very hard in order to get the squirrel tail to attach. It's different from how I originally did my Barbie customization into Squirrel Girl doll because I sewed the tail to the doll's outfit instead of attaching it to the doll's body. I did it that way because I thought anyone owning that doll may want to occasionally ch change that doll's clothes, but didn't want to deal with having a bushy tail permanently attached to her body. The official Squirrel Girl doll's tail is a ball joint, and it fits into a small socket in her back. The tail is pretty versatile. You can rotate it around in a circle. You can move it in the up position but it tends to stand still. It doesn't really have much movement. When you move the tail to the down position, you can rock the tail back and forth, which is kind of cool. Squirrel Girl is depicted in the comic books as having short hair that doesn't go beyond the earlobes. The Marvel Rising version has Squirrel Girl with long hair that she wears in a braid. The hairstyle really works on that doll really well. The only thing is that you have to watch the hair when you rotate the tail so the long braid doesn't interfere with the tail or the two don't somehow get tangled up together. The official Squirrel Girl doll has a very bright and appealing face. The original comic book series is pretty lighthearted in tone compared to other Marvel comics series like the X-Men or Spider-Man, so whoever designed this doll did a pretty good job of reflecting that cheerful look on the doll. When I did my original homemade Squirrel Girl doll, I fashioned her squirrel ear headband using pipe cleaners and felt. The headband on the official doll is made from hard plastic. It is removable and there are some comb-like teeth that are there to keep the headband in place on the head. I have based the superhero costume I designed for the homemade doll on what the comic book version wore. The official doll has a costume that's similar to what the Marvel Rising version wears and it's also similar to, to the comic book version's outfit. The only noticeable difference is that her jacket is olive green instead of brown and her leggings are also an olive green color while the original was a blue gray color. While I made a separate utility belt for my homemade doll out of felt, 
The official doll's outfit has the belt printed on the short's fabric. The only advantage is that it's one less outfit accessory that one has to keep track of. As for a brown boot, I originally made them from felt for the homemade doll. The official doll has brown boots made from plastic. The printed details of these boots are amazing! If you look close on the top trim and tongue of her boots, you'll see a tiny pattern of acorns and oak leaves. How cool is that? Hippy Toe is incredibly cute. Instead of wearing a pink ribbon like she does in the comic book series, the toy version has a tiny yellow acorn necklace, but that change doesn't detract from the overall cuteness of this squirrel. Hasbro came up with a really cool way of t keeping Tippy Toe close to Squirrel Girl. Basically, you clip the squirrel on Squirrel Girl's arm, then rotate the hand to keep Tippy Toe from falling off. That's a great way of keeping Squirrel Girl and Tippy Toe together, especially when they aren't being played with, because it would be so easy to lose or misplace Tippy Toe otherwise. So, how would the official Squirrel Girl doll compare with my previous homemade Squirrel Girl doll? I had used a Made to Move Barbie doll as the base for my original customized Squirrel Girl tutorial series. Like I mentioned earlier in this video, I have since sold my homemade Squirrel Girl doll. But I have another Barbie doll that I had purchased a few years before I made my video tutorial series. She was released as among the first generation of the Barbie Fashionista line back in 2009, and she was advertised on the box as having 100 plus poses. I have to give a shout out to the Adventures in Barbie collecting website for helping me to identify this doll, since I had long forgotten exactly what kind of Barbie this is. I made a major adult Barbie doll collector sin of removing the doll from her original packaging, then throwing it out. All I remember is that I purchased this doll because I briefly had an idea of making my own line of doll clothes to sell at various craft shows, but that idea never quite got off the ground. Anyway, this doll is just as articulated as the more recent made-to-move Barbie dolls. The only difference is that this doll's default outfit, which is she is wearing in this video, makes her look like she's on her way to a party with her friends at a local nightclub, while the made-to-move Barbies wear a yoga outfit. I also decided to add another doll to the mix. Since Marvel Rising is Marvel Comics' answer to the DC Superhero Girls, I thought it would be appropriate to feature a doll from that line. I decided to use Batgirl. Batgirl has the same color hair as Squirrel Girl, and she has a few articulated joints. She was a doll I originally purchased on clearance for 50% off at Target. Apparently, this particular doll model was discontinued, so I paid $15 for a doll that originally had a list price of nearly $30. Here's a fun fact. Batgirl's real identity is Barbara Gordon, and Barbie is a nickname for Barbara. As for Squirrel Girl, her real name is Doreen Green, so I'm putting a Doreen and two Barbers or Barbies through their paces. Batgirl and Squirrel Girl can literally stand on their own two feet. As for Barbie, I have her leaning against a camera tripod because she's incapable of standing on her own. Batgirl is the tallest of the three, while Barbie is slightly shorter. Squirrel Girl is the shortest of the three, but she still seems to be in scale with the other two dolls. Let's start with the head movements. All three are capable of moving their heads around. Now let's do some arm stretches. Batgirl does it best at holding her arm straight out to the side, but Squirrel Girl isn't too far behind. Barbie seems to have the most difficulty in keeping her arm straight out. The winner is Batgirl. Let's do some arm bends. Squirrel Girl and Barbie can bend both arms. Batgirl has no trouble with bending her left arm, but for whatever reason, the toy manufacturer decided to keep her right arm perfectly straight with no elbow or wrist joints at all. That weapon she's holding in her right hand is permanently attached. Squirrel Girl and Barbie are tied as the winner. Now let's put the hands on the hips. Barbie does that one the best. 
Squirrel Girl can bend her elbows, but I couldn't get her hands close enough to her waist so they could touch. Bat Girl can touch her waist with her left arm, but due to her other arm being perfectly straight with no joints below the shoulder, and due to the fact that she has that weapon permanently attached to her right hand, it's impossible to get her right arm to touch her waist. It's no contest. Barbie totally rocks that pose. Let's do a perfect split. Barbie totally aces it. Squirrel Girl and Bat Girl can't quite achieve that pose. While they can keep their one leg straight in the front, they have to bend their back leg in order to not completely lie on the ground. So they have to do more of a partial kneeling than a complete split. Barbie wins again. All three dolls decide to take a breather. They are all equally adept at sitting on their behinds with their legs straight out. Now it's time to try kneeling on both knees. Squirrel Girl and Barbie have no problem, but Bat Girl is struggling. It's a tie between Squirrel Girl and Barbie. The dolls take another breather. All three have no problem with doing a typical sitting pose. Finally, let's try crossing legs at the knee. Barbie achieves it with no problem at all. Squirrel Girl can't quite cross her legs. Bat Girl can't cross her legs at the knee, but instead she can cross at the ankles. Barbie wins this round. So, which is better? The official licensed doll or my customized version? While the articulated Barbie doll can hold some poses better, Squirrel Girl isn't too far behind when it comes to striking a pose. The big plus is that Squirrel Girl can stand on her own two feet while Barbie needs either a doll stand or something sturdy to lean against. I also liked how Tippy Toe can perch on Squirrel Girl's arm, which is something I could never get that Schleich Squirrel to do with the Made to Move Barbie customized as Squirrel Girl. Are the tutorials I originally created in 2016 still relevant? It depends. I originally gave people a few choices in what Barbie dolls they can select and how they want to customize their dolls. If you are going by just price alone, purchasing a new Made to Move Barbie costs around $15, while a doll wig costs around $25. Plus, there's the extra $5 for the fabrics and an extra $3 for the Schleich Squirrel to stand in for tippy toe. Total price is $48. It would be more expensive than buying even the Target exclusive Deluxe Squirrel Girl package, which costs $29.99 but comes with an extra outfit. If you use a thrift store Barbie for around $3 as the base, and you cut and dye the hair with the acrylic paint and water combination, buy the fabric for $5, and the Schleich Squirrel for $3, you might pay somewhere around $17, especially if you have to buy the recommended artist grade acrylic paint that comes in a tube and costs around $6 for the real high quality stuff that's made by companies like Liquidex and Windsor and & Newton, which makes it only about $2.99 cheaper than buying the basic $19.99 Squirrel Girl package. Based on both price and the time required, you'd be better off buying the official doll in the store. But if you're the kind of crafty person with some free time who loves a DIY challenge, well, go ahead and use my tutorials. I hope you have as much fun with them as I did making them. Right now, I'm making this video in late 2018. The first film in the Marvel Rising series was recently aired on cable TV not too long ago. And you can now stream it online for free from Disney's website. You can do a Google search to find it. There was recently an announcement of two follow-ups to that movie, but no release dates have been announced yet. It's too soon to see whether Marvel Rising will become just as big a hit as the DC Superhero Girls. If Marvel Rising becomes popular, then expect to see more Squirrel Girl action figure dolls for years to come. If it flops, well, you can always use my tutorial series if you want a Squirrel Girl doll in the future, but you can't get one because it's been discontinued and you can't find a used one on eBay that's within your price range. I'll probably continue with customizing used thrift shop Barbies into generic fairy dolls and other generic characters such as a pirate or a mermaid. But I'm done with making video tutorials on customizing a Barbie as a licensed character from a major Hollywood studio or comic book company. 
I learned the hard way that even a minor lesser known comic book character will eventually become an official licensed product. If you like this video and want to see more from me, hit the subscribe button. I'm always open to suggestions on what to do in this channel next, so feel free to leave a comment on what you would like to see. Goodbye and have a nice day!